course for today is basically so if we have now covered the more so-called tabular microdata where everything could kind of fit into an uh, excel document into into a table now we start working with data that it's not just a table anymore and some type of data that is used a lot at alto are videos with videos being you know the biggest term which also entail moving images which can also mean static images and can also mean audio and specifically when it comes to personal data it's speech so today we basically try to look at this more complex data and um, what can be done when we want to be identified uh, for the speech part we were planning to have Abram to uh, give a mini kind of how can I say background and as well as practical demo but things unfortunately couldn't make it so I'm just gonna stick to the practical demo I'm just gonna point you to the slides and then if you really want to know more about the background you know you can eventually refer to that at the end of the day because the goal of this of this workshop is practical you know even if you know even if, I, if me myself I'm not a speech expert even if I don't understand all the mathematical details of what's going on I'm happy to use a tool that provides an output that is you know that according to the expert is anonymous or at least anonymous enough and then for the last uh, part we have Dan here who is gonna specifically talk about uh, geospatial data so you know the tracking of movement of individuals so here a little bit more details on the tiny table and Dan also has uploaded the slides so you can find the link already there so for the practical bits um, I've uploaded some data into this uh, uh, Google Drive so if you go on the I can also paste the link on chat for your convenience if I find the same chat yeah so if you scroll down to day three actually I can even give you the exact link so that we don't need to scroll a lot okay so if you go to the last link that I gave you you find this link on this Google Drive the data that is there is just a video and um, the video it's actually I use the video where I'm the one talking well there's also Kate there's also Kate but this is from an event maybe I should add the page to the event if you're interested an event that we had um, in February called this is Alto where I was one of the hosts and we interviewed Rika Nimela so there's a short video that was here you can watch the full event I can paste the link to the to the web page and um, so yeah it's also a nice interesting event where we discuss where we discuss what's going on at Alto and other things so um, all right so basically now if you downloaded the material you should have now a folder let me check where is my folder okay if you unzip it you should have a folder called like this day three data and then i go inside the folder and this is the kind of original file that we will use for our demo i can play it just to give you an idea this is a the, the whole event was one hour this is just like few seconds and this was used in like instagram and, and facebook and at Alto, we are here to shape a sustainable future. Lots of research at Alto is centered around these issues, like novel material. Okay, so the goal for today, or at least for the first part, is that we want to have this video as anonymous as possible. With the sound that you're not able to recognize that it's me, even though it's hard to be identified the bad Italian English accent. And then... Um, and then of course basically blur the face you know this is not perfection this is meaning that okay maybe my let's say my shirt is anonymous enough that if you blur the face 
any people are maybe even the background maybe you don't really know who who is that person who is talking but you understand that you know even though you use these techniques the face can be blurred and that's already something but that doesn't make the person you know not identifiable it might be that the person wears such a specific t-shirt that it's unique and everyone knows that that it's that person imagine some celebrity or or then you know there might be other um part of the let's say that the person is a tattoo on the hand and you're filming the hand because they are they're important so so you know there are all these type of uh, extra extra care that you need to apply if you want to be identified and you know anonymize this type of visual data okay so now that everything works we can actually start and hopefully you were able to download the data as always we use this um, what's the name um, hackmd chat i pasted the link here in the top for the chat of today so let's start with some icebreaker just to stretch our fingers i also paste the link on the zoom chat so you also have it so a little bit of a recap you know if you go back to the day one chat where most of you wrote down your specific learning goals what do you wish to learn of course you know we haven't covered the whole course yet so maybe what you were wishing it hasn't happened yet maybe it will happen today maybe it will happen next next time but at least it's good to revise the learning goal so this is kind of a general asking you are you feeling fine are you happy is everything okay did we miss to cover something that would have been useful you know so if you go to the HackMD that I pasted in the chat, and there you also find from the web page, you can pick one spot and start um, and start writing. So that um, yeah, I put, I pasted the link also on the first day in case we did not remember what you wrote as your um personal learning goals so if everything is fine you can just say that everything is fine and things are going as you wished but this is the kind of chance for you especially if you feel that we skipped something that you would have hoped that you would have needed and so yeah couple of minutes so. But in general, the feeling seems to be positive. So, you know, this is the chance where you can complain anonymously. Maybe one point to mention that HackMD is anonymous if you don't make yourself, you know, identifiable. Meaning that if you log in into the HackMD system and you have a HackMD account, for example, linked with GitHub, then your, what you write here will have, a, you know, will be linked to you but if you open the hack and delete let's say from an incognito window where you're not li linked when you're not logged in into anything hack and delete is anonymous so all right but in general most of you have written something and and um yeah. maybe since we're since you're we're still warming up a mini quiz that i was thinking which is a good reality check. So a question like, you know, let's see if you understood the question and then you can answer. Do you, the question is, do you always need 
to anonymize your research personal data. So this is a free text question. Take it as a quiz. I'm not going to give any marks. And uh, of course, this is a bit of a, you know, everyone is going to answer here below. So you will see what other people are writing. It's, uh, you know, the goal here is not to, to mm, have all of you write what is the right question, but the goal for you is to, or for me, it's actually to understand that, do you understand why we're doing all this? You know, is it clear why we're here? Or are we just doing this just because some, you know, somebody from above said, Nobody wants to take the quiz, it's anonymous. Let's put some. It's nice to see that actually you have different, different opinions. So it's a, it's a good question to discuss. So some people are saying that no, that we do not need, we, don't, we should not always need to anonymize data. Some people are a bit unsure and they say yes. Of course, some people are bringing examples of somebody saying yes, because let's say medical images, they need to be anonymized. But this is an important question that is good to reflect at this point, because um, what I don't like myself is that somebody from above, whether it's the government, the European Parliament or whoever, comes up with a rule like, you know, you should anonymize the data. And then the rule is passed to, let's say, the president of research, vice president of research at Alto is then passing the rule to the professors who are then passing the rule to the postdocs who are then passing the rule to the doctoral students who just didn't now need to start do the actual task, you know. So it's nice that whoever from above decides we need to do something better than we did it in the past, like anonymizing the data. But in the end, it's extra work for, you know, the lower, whatever, uh, I, I don't like to say lower part of the pyramid, but, you know, in, in the end, it's us doing the, the dirty job. So the correct answer, you know, the technically correct answer is that no, you do not always need to anonymize research personal data. You can even work with very sensitive data coming from a registry containing uh, you know, all sorts of private information. The only thing you need to remember that if your data is so sensitive that you have, let's say, the 5 million uh, individuals in Finland and all their, let's say, income and, um, and the social security number. So, of course, that is an extremely sensitive data set. If you do a mistake and that gets leaked, then you are in, in, in trouble. But, uh, but there is no law that requires you to anonymize the research personal data. So at the end, the answer, it, it's nice that you're answering with no yes, because the answer is blurred and it depends on the risk. So as researchers, we are allowed to use, to go to, to store as sensitive data as, as we need, as, pers as much personal data as we need for our goals. But then what we evaluate, and you are evaluating clearly, are the risks. So if you feel that you know, the system you use, the, the setup, the technical setup is secure enough, then you, you might be happy with the, you know, without the need of, of, um, of uh, anonymizing your personal data. So let's say, imagine that you collect interviews and you, the interviews are stored in a secure system and you just play back the, the files 
and you're the only one who listens to in these interviews and take down notes, it's okay, you know. And then you can also add another layer of risk that, you know, what would be would something really bad happen if someone steals your password and publishes those interviews. And of course, here it might depend on your research question, but sometimes maybe you know there is no actual risk if you know it, it's not nice, of course, to tell your subjects that um, you know that something bad happened. But uh, it's actually you know it it the the difficult part for you is not actually the anonymization, but it's understanding the risk that is attached to the type of data that you work with. So you don't always need to anonymize the research personal data, but consider the risk. In um, uh, GDPR provides a tool which is called the DPIA, which is Data Protection Impact Assessment. I'm not saying that you should always do a DPIA, which is like a, assessing the risk associated with your personal data. Um, but, uh, but you know, this is a reflection that you do with not just alone, of course, with the people in your field, with the people in your in your team, and eventually with us, with people from research services, the legal services, that we can help you to to understand these risks. If you have questions on this, you know it's good to ask. So the DPIA, I can expand. It's this this that I mentioned. It's this data protection impact assessment. I'm sure I misspelled. And then at under alto.fi, I think we have a template for the DPIA, which I can also link to the, I go to English. I think there's also a template in Spanish. It's basically like you can think that it's a questionnaire that makes you reflect on the sensitivity of the personal data that you process. So um, let's see if I find the template. Well, I'll link the template later. I will link the template. But um, we have other, we had actually, it was uh, last month, um, a lecture on this, uh, maybe with David Instrom, on, this, um, on these issues of how to process personal data. So with the DPIA. All right. Okay, so we can actually start for today. I'll leave here in the Hack and the possible question or comments that you have. And I see there's something in the chat, in the Zoom chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we already said. Okay, so now we can actually then anonymize some video data together and images. So let me go to the notes of today. So, so let's start with images. So in the same folder that I gave you, there's a zip file. If you extract it, I click on extract all and then press extract and Windows should do its job. Slowly, slowly. So there's a folder with some uh, 700 images, which in this case, it's a bit of a silly example. They're just the frames from the video that I, that I gave you. I don't know why this is so slow, <laughs> but maybe because the zoom is taking so much. CPU, but if you do the same, hopefully your computer is not this slow to unzip the file. Um, the idea being that inside this folder there are some images, right? And uh, we can consider the case that you have pictures. So, you know, videos are just uh, many pictures one after the other. So, in this case, if you take the image one from this folder, this you, you can imagine that this is a picture of me. And uh, so now your goal would be how to anonymize this type of data. So now, as I told you at the beginning, we are happy just with a blurred face and we can assume that nobody can recognize the rest, yeah, even though we understand that this is not completely true. So to, 
anonymized or to blur a face as you see even sometimes on television when they interview something and you have blur faces so as you can imagine you need to use some tool for for graphical editing for processing of images there are many tools and most likely you are already aware of some of these tools and maybe you already know how to do this yourself i collected a series of um, links in this um, in this um, website um, so or actually in this at this link they they gather some options for blurry faces and especially they look at blurry faces online without downloading anything because sometimes you are not able to install some photo or video editing apps so there are various options here this face pixelizer used to be good meaning that it used to work but recently i don't know if something changed in their code or because it's an application that runs on the browser if something changed with the application it doesn't really work anymore but i can show you the idea behind this it's um, it's somewhat like similar what we did with amnesia so that in this case though instead of uploading some uh, tabular data we upload a picture so now here i can take one of the images that i gave you from that zip folder and i drag and drop it on top of the thing so then basically this tool which runs actually locally so i didn't upload my image to their website everything runs locally and as we said earlier at least this if we believe what they say uh, then i can click on pixelize and basically what the tool does is that automatically finds the faces in the picture and applies some pixel you know this is fine you can really see that they really identified only only the face but eventually someone might want to uh, anonymize more the image especially somebody in, okay, in my case i'm anonymous enough with the shaved head but if somebody would have some hair that you know are unique or that you wouldn't be able to identify something from the hair then you will need this manual option the issue is that the manual bit is not is not working anymore so this tool used to be good but recently it's broken but if we go back to these other options there's another tool here called pine tools which kind of does the same idea so if you you can try these things while i'm while i'm showing to you if also if you want or you can do it later we will have a section apart for for this type of exercise so with these pine tools you can then choose the image and then yes i take one of these um, pictures again of me uh, and now here you can uh, actually specify an area where you want to apply some pixelation so here is asking me how big should be the you know the mosaic of the pixelation we can go a little bit bigger and then uh, there was a button to actually run this thing if i find it yes here below sorry so then i click this and this is the image that is generated and maybe it's not anonymous enough it's not blurred enough you can make it bigger and run it again and you know, blur a bit more so this is the kind of most simple and less uh, invasive in the sense that you don't need to install anything on your computer and you can run it and it works often people are also familiar with graphical tools you don't really need to have photoshop but you know the the sister of photoshop from the free open science world is, is gimp so with gimp i'm not going to show you but um, similarly you can select a part of the of the picture and then apply some uh, some of these filters and one of these filters is this mosaic so so then you're able to pixelate a single picture things of course get more interesting when instead of having a single picture we have many pictures like a video so for our demo here we had this um, where is it 
we have this short video from the this is alto event and um, there are as i said at the beginning two ways of um, of anonymizing it one is using you know if you if you don't have too many videos to process you can also do it manually with the program to to process video but if you have hundreds or thousands of videos that you need to uh, that you need to be identified that you need to anonymize then then it's good to switch to some code and so first i will give you the demo on how to do it manually graphically and then second i will show you how to do it with the code then on the actual exercise that you will do yourself you can decide i will create the breakout room so that in one breakout room people will try to do it graphically using the mouse and using the tool that i'm going to show now and in another breakout room, people can do it with the code. And of course, you're within the breakout room, you can decide how you want to organize your work. But ideally, if somebody wants to show to share the screen and things can be done together. You can also do this alone. You don't have to work in groups. So let me check if there's any questions on the how can be no questions. Remember, you can write your questions or comment there we can check them later and let's check the time okay 12 30 we're in time so a way to do it manually uh, there are multiple options um, at alto i was checking if there's a standard tool installed in as many co alto computers as possible but unfortunately there isn't and um, of course, this is always a practical issue because sometimes you don't have the permission to install something. So now I will just assume that you have access to a workstation when you can install something on that workstation. Uh, otherwise, I mean, other tools, I'm not saying that this Filmora tool that I'm going to show you now is the best, but it's free and does the job and it's quite light in a sense that it doesn't, you know, it, it's not something with a very steep learning curve like uh, Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects. But as you can imagine, many other video editing tools might do the same thing. So you, if you already are familiar with the video editing tool, you might want to try first with that. But if you're not familiar with anything and you can actually install things, I recommend downloading and installing Filmora. So in the meantime, I'll give you the demo if you actually want to do it. During the exercise, I recommend doing, you know, download it and installing it. I think it works for Mac and Windows. Yes, for Linux, it, I couldn't find a good option. I'm sure there is something out there for Linux, but uh, eventually this is a task for those of you who only have access to a Linux machine if you want to do it with the, with the graphical tool. And so, yeah, you can download it after you download it and install it. The tool looks like this. I'm going to start it now. It's basically like a video editing tool. As soon as it starts. So the Filmora has actually embedded some uh, automatic face detection systems where the idea is um, is exactly like the pixel 8 uh, demo that I gave you for the single face that, that the, the tool can automatically detect faces. This is handy because um, you know if you have a, in our demo that we will do now it's a very short video and it, it could have been done manually but imagine you have a long video with many faces you know, already having um, that the computer kind of, you know, is, uh, is able to automatically detect the face, that's a big advantage. But of course, it's not perfect. And I will show you immediately. So first I click, well, first there's some advertisement that we don't need. So first I click on import file, import media. And now I'm gonna add the, the, the video file. So this MP4, which is a format where we have stored the video for our demo. So then the file goes here on this kind of 
project folder and then I drag the file to the timeline. So the idea is that with these editing softwares that uh, things that are on the timeline are the ones that will go in the final project, in the final export, as they call it. Here they ask me if I want to resize the video to the project that I have, but I'm actually happy with the original, with the original square format. So I click on the original one. And so now there's just a video. If I press the space bar, Alto, we are here to shape us. Hear the, I, I hope you heard the sound. I think once I've done it once, you should always hear it. So, okay, so basically now we have the video, and this is the original video. And here I can scroll to the video, and that's for me, and then escape, and that's it. So then I click on effects, and then I specify this utility. And there are multiple effects here that are useful. And for now, we want to choose the face of so this automatically detects the face and then blurs the area of the picture of the frame where there's a face. So I click on the plus. And the way it works is that it adds a new track into this uh, um, video editing tool so that I actually need to expand this. Uh, so expand it so that it covers the whole video. Okay. And now you already see in the moment where I am in time, the face automatically got blurred. And the issue, even though the people who made this tool and the people who made other tools, they always say that when the face is not, that the tool works really well when the face is facing the camera, but then when the head turns a bit, sometimes the tools, this, this automatic face removal tools have issues. And these people from Filmora, they said that their tool doesn't have issues, but now I'm going to move slowly forward in time. And when my head turns, that there you go. So now there are some frames where my head is visible. I can now play back from the beginning so that we can basically, so basically what we are doing right now is the so-called quality control of the anonymization because we are not trusting the tool blindly. We need to rewatch the video. At Adalto, sure. we are here to shape a sustainable future. Lots of research at Adalto is centered around these issues like novel materials for engineering, new fabrics, energy, and so many other interesting projects focused on sustainability. Okay, so when I turn my head, my face is visible. Yeah, that's so true. And also for a few frames, like now when I post for a few frames, also Kate's face was visible. So we need to fix these things manually. So for example, I find the moment where my face is still blurred. And now here, I, there's another tool in these effects, which is called the mosaic. So I now add another track for the mosaic tool. And uh, so if you let me go back to the beginning, yeah, let's say this bit here, if you double click on the mosaic track, then I can choose, for example, pixelate. I need to move the actual area manually because now we're not using anymore the automatic face detection and even pick some blurring. So now I fixed at least this moment so that when I press play, Novel materials for engineering, new fabrics, energy, and so many other interesting projects focused on sustainability. Yeah, that's so true. And the reality is, is that sustainability can mean so many different things, and we need to tackle it from many different angles. There was a couple of frames where Kate's face was visible, so it's again the same thing. I press OK here. I will need to add another mosaic bit for Kate. In this case is quite easy, and I'm quite sure that is when people do these interviews, the subject is, is still. So they are easy in a sense that most likely, you know, the face stays in the same spot in the camera. And so you don't need to do much of this, uh, many of these uh, manual fixes. But you know, it's, it, it can be challenging if you have lots of people dancing and moving and uh, or you know, some video, um, some video that you collected outdoor with lots of people in the background, it might 
it might start to become tedious to you know adding all this mosaic or or whatever uh, in that case then maybe some tools that are based on automated systems like uh, with the python example that i will give soon they might perform better but even there you know it's a case by case situation all right so now it's 1242 let's see if there's any uh, questions in the how can be okay there's no questions and i don't see anything in the zoom either okay so basically we, you got the idea of how to do this uh, um, manually with the filmora and maybe if you're familiar with other video editing tools you might you want to check with your favorite tool how to do it programmatically there's a nice library from python called the face i will just give the python example because um you know let's try to limit all the options but i'm sure there's a r or matlab or whatever programming language you can if you are interested and if you want to find what would be the equivalent in another language you can check that but for now we check python the face as you can guess it's most likely to install the face and that's the project here i can link it to the course page so the tool is quite uh, simple you install it like like this it's actually one of those tools where the the coders they did a good they did a good um they did a good job that by only running pip install the face you actually get everything done plus some extension in their git repository meaning that you don't need to you know struggle with the virtual environment from python and uh, once you install everything then the face the deface uh, command can be run as an executable and then you specified the the file name all right so now i can yeah another thing that i didn't mention this tool can also be used to live defacing so that if you run it live it can automatically uh, from the webcam for example see the um where face is and try to to deface it so now i go back to i take a terminal so that i can run it with you i use uh, git bash on windows but you can use whatever terminal you might have let me maybe make the fonts a little bit bigger so that you you can read better what i'm gonna type okay so i think i store it in code and video the face okay so what i did is um do you see my terminal and do you see everything so um, i always for every project i do i prefer to create a dedicated python environment so that i'm not messing the other projects and it's also easy in case something goes bad i delete the folder and start again so my python environment is this one i can share the code with you why not visual studio code wakes up yep so i'm gonna now paste this in the course web page so that those of you uh, for the exercise the good thing of what can be is that you can easily paste code and there's also a way to get the syntax i like i will fix it later i don't remember the short right now but so basically here you see the code that i'm running i have to add this line to check if it's a windows machine um because the way windows wants to start an environment is different on how linux or mac does it 
So, but basically I need to install the face. Well, there's also this exif that it's another package that we will talk about later. And then this other uh, tool here. Uh, at the end, I always, always install the kernel because then if I want to use with Jupyter uh, notebook, I can specify you know, that, the, that the notebook can use this kernel with these packages. So if we go back to the terminal, I've already run this setup. So I already have my environment there. I need to activate it. So the activation in my window case is this. Source activate. All right, so now you see here in my prompt that now I have the environment activated, the Python environment activated. And then if we refer to the manual of the deface, it's as simple as typing the face and the path where the video is. So in my case, then it would be the face and then the path was in, you have a different path here. I think in the desktop, All right, I need to copy the path because I don't remember it. Basically the path to this file. Go to properties. Uh, oh yeah, let's uh, accept that it works for sometimes this Windows machine. I have some issue, but uh, you know, this is a real case, real life demo. So maybe actually I'm gonna you know make my life easier <laughs> and move the video file to the to the folder where I have the code. And so I have a folder that is called code and inside there I made this video deface. And so here I'm gonna copy the mp4 file and paste it here inside. Okay, so now I can actually run it. It was deface. And then the name of the file, this is alto.24. So now the Python code is running. Um, I didn't really go into the explanation what it's doing, but long story short, the tool is uh, kind of trained to automatically detect the face in the, in the video. And then it goes through each frame to identify possible faces. And at the end, it will generate, or it is right now generating a new MP4 video file that is stored in the same folder with the underscore anonymized as output. As you can imagine already, you can you know imagine that you would need to process 100 of these videos. You can script this both in the input as well as in the output that you can you know pass make a script that would call uh the face for 100 different videos and and create let's say store the output in a you know subfolder you can get all these options and feel free to explore them during the practical part but anyway now we let it run we can check the output later so we we have a uh, 10 minutes before the break and after maybe the break we could do the actual practical part so i remind you again the idea of the practical part is that i will create two breakout rooms maybe i'll write it down so that so that we know let me find the chat for today okay there's no questions so exercise from uh, 13 or 15 so after the break to maybe 13 40 and so download the data from the link on course web page then room one be facing with Kimora or any other graphical tool 
video editing tool and ROM2 defacing with Python deface or if you want to explore other libraries in your programming language language just go ahead please share the experience with others in the room especially to help those who might be less familiar with such tools okay so now it's uh, we could have a break even oh there's a question actually um can you use the face also to blur individual photos in bulk yes so the face python the face also takes pictures as input so yes the, the answer is yes um there are other tools of course i, I just picked the face because it's stable it's well maintained it, it runs well on multiple operating systems so it's um but i'm sure there are other libraries for images only or so feel free to explore maybe uh, for those who want to explore you know other idea for those who want to explore other libraries or other programming languages please share your findings with us okay so i don't see any other questions let me check the zoom if there's anything in the chat Well, maybe another last thing before we stay still uh, how many minutes, seven minutes before the break. Uh, if you noticed in the in the program for the day, we talked about pictures and uh, and videos and we focused on the face because it's basically the most recognizable trait of an individual, even though we said you know that there's other issues. But there's a, I move this a little bit higher. There's another issue with this type of data. It's not just actually for the video files and the image files. This type of issue of so called hidden personal data is actually in many other types of files. It's inside PDFs, it's inside Word documents. So I believe that most of you know what is a metadata. But the idea is basically that within a file, like in this case, an image, there is not just the actual image so you know the values of the pixels and the colors that are stored in, inside the image but there are also other types of metadata so this metadata can actually contain personal data it can contain for example the exact moment where a picture was taken the type of camera the gps location where the picture was actually taken so you know you might even come across somebody might send you a picture with their mobile and you know if you are kind of if you're able to download the picture and then explore the content of the picture you might start getting more information from that picture maybe you realize that the person you know sent the picture but the date is from a few years ago and maybe the picture you realize that there's a gps coordinates that you know doesn't match what the person is saying so all this type of hidden personal data inside images and videos and and all files honestly is still personal data and so if you let's say are taking pictures and you need to de-identify the picture it's not enough to blur the face you also need to check this exif data so exif data can be removed manually and i will show you how to do it with windows graphically but of course you can also edit it or edit exif programmatically so i can just paste the link in this git install exif this is a good tool for python i just stick to python but you know i'm sure there's anything for another so here you, you see at least for images 
uh, the type of personal data or even you know any data that is embedded inside the image so this is all the possible type of metadata and um, i paste the link here but uh, because people are aware about this uh, hidden data inside the images the operating system that you use at least windows and linux well all of them linux linux and mac they allow you to explore this uh, issue so for example if you take the data for the demo data that i gave you for today's course let me find it so inside the folder can i find it i created i asked it to unzip this exif images folder so here i injected some fake exif um, data to these images so for example if you right click this example is for windows but in linux and mac it's basically the same if you right click the image and then click on properties here on the details you actually have this you know there is some of this exif data that is about the actual picture so amount of pixels and resolution and number of bits for the colors but there are also you know so in this case i've included the latitude and the longitude which tells you when the picture you know where the picture was taken and uh, there might be other so here actually doesn't really show many things in the in the windows option there are nice online tools that you can use online or that you can use locally as a plugin now i'm gonna use one of these exif readers from online which means that my image will be uploaded to their server but there are equivalent that would run inside the browser so now again i choose the one of these images here and i'm not a robot and so now this tool has a little bit more refined so now it identifies that this picture was taken on the february 18 2021 this is the I, this was actually the date of the event and then is able to identify the latitude the longitude hidden inside the picture and i can even click on google map and see where was this picture actually taken and it gives us the, the you know main building or whatever is the name of this building these days you know what i mean so with windows then if i right click and click on properties and details here at the bottom there is remove properties and personal information so i click on this and now it would basically scrape as much as possible um here i select the option create a copy with all possible properties removed so in the end it's just an image there's no of this hidden metadata and i'm happy with that option so i click ok and then it did the tax the task and let me see where the image was now stored because i don't remember by heart i think it keeps it in the same folder if just I have to just see things. I just want to upload this, the identified image, so that you can see that everything has been removed. Anyway, I'll show it later. I don't know why well, now it's taking ages to just <laughs> sort some image. All right, but um, we can have a break now. It's one o'clock. And let's check if there's any question. How can be here? Let's see. Any question? So, so yeah, let's come back at 1.15 and then you can do the exercise. I estimate 25 minutes should be enough for doing this whether you want to do the graphical defacing or the code based defacing and after that we can continue with the speech a little bit of speech so it's um 
115 <clears throat> or it is not yet 115. but we can um, before doing the exercise I'm actually wondering if you well maybe it's a but should we try to do the exercise in 15 minutes and then you can write if you need more time uh, you know extendable because the good thing is that you actually do these things in practice and um, it's nice to hear me talking and then leave and then in one year maybe you need to actually do it so because it's not at least I assume that you shouldn't be too, there shouldn't be too many blockers or the biggest blocker is usually installing the stuff. But, uh, um, but yeah, so it's good that let's put 15 minutes and then eventually you just let me know here on RKD and I can add, you know, we can put more time. One thing that I didn't mention is that if you are here also for the credit, as last time, please send me a direct chat message on Zoom with your name is her name okay so before maybe we go to the breakout rooms it's good to check the output so we run this uh, python command the deface this python library which has created this new file so we can actually have a look at how this file looks like let me find the right spot yeah so this is the file and now I press play. So you see that basically it has identified where the face was and in this case blurred it. And uh, you know, it's still some people and you, you can of course adapt this kind of size of the blur, but you know, maybe somebody might be able to recognize Kate from her hair or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, of course, I'm just playing the devil's advocate, but this is the issue. It's, it's nice also in, in the chat, Pavi Nistrom, our legal expert, mentioned that, you know, you, you should get your, how can I say, if you anonymize some data and use some tools, it's good to have a discussion with some ITs of your department or whoever, you know, that could give an opinion of the of the quality most likely you are the expert meaning that you know if things were being anonymized enough that even you yourself are not able to recognize the person you interviewed for example but uh, you know it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's good to make this process more uh, public that you discuss with others if, especially if you're planning to upload the data somewhere where it could even be open or, or or at least if not open shared with with other with other people who are not involved in the research okay then another thing that we did before the break was up removing this hidden hidden metadata that is inside the images so yeah this is the image with the removed metadata so now if i look at the properties this is from the windows uh then the GPS coordinates they have gone and all these other whatever they were exif information but uh, I show you this online exif tool so we could use that to retest this was the old picture let's choose the new one so I guess I have to scroll down to the end to see the modified one hopefully not set there and I'm going to run folder okay yes this one with the copy so I'm not a robot let's see if windows did a good job with removing every hidden information yes there's nothing these are properties of the file so on this uh, 
extension, this type of so-called coder of the image. But otherwise, you see there's no GPS data and other data. But so now this image is clean. What I showed you with Windows is the same with Mac. You can select multiple images and kind of you know look at the properties of them and clean them all at once. Or then, as I specified earlier, you can also do it programmatically with uh, with uh, Python, for example. Okay, so maybe now let's go back to the HackMD. There are no questions. Another way of dealing with these um, videos and people in videos is to also kind of abstract the actual person moving in the video. So a nice alternative that is used at Alto is open pose. So open pose is a tool that is based on machine learning where basically there is a pre-trained model that is able to identify the person in the video. So if you have a video with one or more persons moving, open pose will basically identify the joints of the person. So the joints of the fingers, the hands, and even the so-called action units from the face around the eyes and around the mouth. And so basically what you, you can anonymize the video in the sense that you can replace completely the actual person with blurring, for example, with this stick figure. So of course we're going to, you know, some extreme level of anonymization, which is almost going towards the level of synthesis. On Thursday, I will talk about synthesis, but just to give you a little uh, preview that, for example, there are tools based on machine learning where you can swap a face in to a, to a video. So through synthesis, you can actually replace somebody's face with someone else's face, which also it's somewhat scary because then you can, um, you know, it might look that somebody, you know, the president of the United States said something, but it's actually one of these machine learning, uh, not blur, but the resynthesized faces. So it, the, the technology for doing that is available and it's not too difficult, but the setup is quite demanding. So we will not be really able to test it on Thursday. But for those who want to, to test this, I can, I can give some hints on, uh, on how to do it. But anyway, open pose, the idea is, is that you, if you run the open pose, you can uh, obtain this you know, the stick figures and then the video will be of the stick figures. It works quite well, even with a large amount of people. So it could be an option, you know, if, if this is the type of data that you are working with and you really need to you know, reshare it without having the faces or even the bodies, because in this case, you can even replace the whole body with just this stick figure. Okay. So basically, this is it when it comes to faces and uh, pictures um, with the, the exercise. So then the second thing that I want to cover today is text, whether it's written text or there is uh, speech. So the problem with text is that, as you can imagine, there's lots of work done with the English language and the sporadic war work done with other languages except German. <laughs> so if you are German or if you need to anonymize German, German in Germany they created an amazing tool which is called Open Redact that works with the German language. And uh, the goal here of these tools that I'm showcasing right now is that you have actual text. Like it could be an open question that the that your participants filled in. It could be, you know, a document from some, uh, I don't know, some uh, medical records a doctor wrote down, some notes from an appointment, you know. So it's this type of uh, unstructured text, written text that needs to be processed with the so-called um, NLP techniques, natural language processing. And so with OpenReduct, I show you the website 
which unfortunately is just for German, but I know that they're working on a project for other languages. Uh, what is the de-anonymizer? Mm. Well, my German is not too good, but basically, um, yeah, here is their tool that basically you can include the text and then the the anonymizer tool is able to identify you know a birth date or an email address all these you know variables that are considered personal data and often when it's about processing this uh, structured text the the best technique is to just replace them with the with blank so you might have seen some classified documents even in, in, in the movies you know i'm not saying in real life but they 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 just kind of cover the actual sensitive words just with the with the blank with the black marker so in some of the links that i pasted here there is something that is also useful or not useful but at least usable this comes from microsoft presidio i think there's a demo somewhere when i tested it the idea is similar you know that uh, they have some unstructured text from your participant and you can run it through this tool and uh, you know like they show you in this animation they remove dates they remove phone numbers credit cards emails and and location let's see if we can test it oh yeah maybe this was the link so now <clears throat> this tool that i'm running maybe i'll paste the link to the demo so here you can use it on the browser now right now this is you see this azure website so azure is kind of the data science part of well it's not just data science but let's say it's part of microsoft systems and services so right now i think what happens is that this fake sensitive test text about this person lives in main credit card some password etc etc is actually sent to the remote host and then the whatever script machine learning system there identifies this uh, what are they called i never remember m-e-r-t uh, it's good it's because it's one of the few times that you will see this um, M E R. What was the acronym? Name entity recognizer, so that they basically recognize some entity, some keywords from the text, and so this system is able to identify name and surname, locations, credit card, and replace it with this, you know, the identifier thing. So. I thought because some of you, if not most of you, are going to process Finnish language. So a little funny thing, just for the sake of playing with the tool, is that I can select this text and go to Google Translate and let Google translate it into, you know, synthetic Finnish. And now a good a simple game that I want to do is that I paste back the Finnish text with the tool, be able to work even with Finnish language. Maybe it's not perfect because in this case, Tessa thinks that it's a person. But um, in this case, this Dave Johnson and, and the location, most likely because we use May, I don't know if we put Kuo Pio. No, you see, so. So it's still not good for 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 finish but at least you know you, you can imagine that it would be the, the first pass you might still be able to use this type of tools made for english language to already get rid of some sensitive information credit card some crypto password ip addresses email etc but then still you need to you know manually uh, try to fix this uh, this to make the text really anonymous so for example this 18 of September of course the English system did not pick it up 
I know that uh, in Finland there is Kieli Panki, and I know that some people in this uh, NLP community, natural language processing in Finland, are working on extending these technologies to Finnish language. It might be that there already exist commercial tools, but at least as far as I asked around and as far as I heard from the expert, there is no free simple tool that could be used. You know? I, I also think that there's a reason that there's some commercial um, how can I say interests, because as you can imagine, a good application for this would be for sensitive text, like a medical EMR, EMR electronic medical records. And so, you know, maybe they are not in a hurry to release something open. But uh, worst case scenario, you need to manually you know, go through the text in Finnish and replace whatever is sensitive with this uh, type of anonymization. I'm happy to, you know, if anyone knows more, more about this automatic processing of written text for Finnish specifically, please feel free to contribute to the Hacken because it's good knowledge that we can pass to others. And then there is speech. So when it comes to speech, um, again, there's a bit of a hole in the market. Again, I'm not sure if there are commercial interests that people that um, people who write this application, maybe they do not want to uh, release them openly. So unfortunately, I was not able, I've searched the web up and down, but I was unable to find an out of the box solution to do uh you know to come to basically anony de identify speech which is a bit of a pity because um it is a pressing issue but we have experts at alto in the department of uh, signal processing speech and other under is it elec so school of um, electrical engineering that they work with these type of issues and so they are able to help you if if you need Often, if you search around, what they recommend is to synthesize speech. So basically what I'm saying that the anonymization of speech is so difficult that even though you might want to apply some effects, like you know, you might have seen in the news, they might interview somebody and they don't want to reveal the identity of the person and you might hear the voice distorted, shifted in tone. But often, if not almost always, you can actually do the kind of inverse transformation so you can obtain the, the original voice but recently people started to use more complex techniques of signal processing so this uh, tool provided this uh, github repository that was recommended made by abram who was supposed to give a lecture on this today but couldn't make it so here for example they are basically processing the speech, separating the kind of, how can I put it in a simple way, but kind of whatever is the identity of the person speaking can be modified and resampled. So for example, you might have a, a male person and you want to transform it into a, into a female. So this tool that I linked here, it's based in Python and it's quite lightweight in a sense that it's not gonna uh, require too much processing. I was able, I was not able to run it on uh, Windows system because of some dependencies in the Python libraries, but uh, it was quite trivial to run it on a Linux machine. So I've already run it with the audio from the This Is Alto event that we've been anonymizing. And so for example, now I can, I leave this as a, you know, volunteering exercise if you, if somebody feels motivated and wants to learn how to anonymize speech, but if you want to do it at home by yourself, I've used as an input this, uh, this is the audio track from the uh, data that we've been using. So this was the original voice. If... At Alto, we are here to shape a sustainable future. Lots of research at Alto is... And then if I run the tool that I linked, I tried you know, run it as um, so transforming the voice into female and also transforming into male. And let's hear. 
Adalto, we are here to shape a sustainable future. Lots of research at Adalto is centered around these issues, like novel materials for engineering, new fabrics, energy, and so many other interesting projects focused on sustainability. Yeah, that's so true. And the reality is, is that sustainability can mean so many... Of course, it's a little bit of a you know, cartoon voice, at least, especially when the female speaker was apparently converted into another female speaker. But um, at least this is, if not the state of the art, but it's a, it's a, it's a technique where the transformation that is applied makes it close to impossible to go back to the original speaker. But of course, you know, you can already understand that speech doesn't just come with this, uh, you know, intonation and other parameters, because there might be this uh, how a person speaks that makes it recognizable. So in this case, specifically, you know, you, if you know me and if you know that I have a bit of an Italian accent from, you know, even though you might hear this anonymized version, you might start guessing that, yes, actually, I know this person. So it's complicated and it's one of those cases that maybe anonymization cannot be guaranteed, but um, maybe the identification, minimization, whatever we called it, can still be used. So then if we think just to close the full cycle of our demo, hands-on demo, here would be that I can then ignore the sound coming from the uh, how did you do that like this? So there was a way to do it. I don't remember how to do it, but basically, um, basically, you know, the goal would be that I can mute the original sound coming from the video and then import the, the, the identified uh, speech sound so that in the end we would produce let me just try to do it i know <laughs> that i've done it but just there is a mute button somewhere positive let's see if this worked okay so now remove the original sound and then I would import the, for example, this fake made sound. Let's see where it went. Uh, yeah. Oops. And so now basically our at Alto, we are here to shape a sustainable future. Lots of research at Alto is centered around these issues, like novel materials for engineering, new fabrics, energy, and so many other interesting projects focused on sustainability. Yeah, that's so true. And the reality is... You know, it's not <clears throat> perfect of the best quality, but you can understand that with uh, maybe 30 minutes of work, we already have a anonymous enough audio user, audio visual material from our little demo. Okay, but now it's time for another break. I'm sorry for those who experience problems in the with this open tool Filmora, but that's one day there will be something that it's uh, usable for everyone and more accessible. So um, let's see if there's any other questions in the chat.